Hey guys, it's me, Badbrick Studio, and welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel, like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell, that would be much appreciated. My goal is to reach 100 subscribers by Christmas Eve, so let's go. Recently, I asked on my Discord server, link in the description below, what videos you'd like to see. And Bamfox asked for a video on how to go about creating more complex projects. I'm certainly not the most qualified person to talk about this, but uh, since I did my Star Wars Battle from Scratch game, that is a bit more complex than some other games, I think I can certainly share the things I learned and the things I did well with you, so you can succeed in your more complex projects. So let's go. So I will be talking you through all of the points I have written down myself that I extracted from the process of creating these kind of games. And I will also be giving some extra tips and tricks. So the first point on my list is minimum viable product. I already defined it in many of my videos, but it's basically going about creating a prototype that has your core mechanics, all the things you really want to get to the point, and nothing of all of these unnecessary things like graphics and stuff. So for example, for Mario, the original Mario Brothers, it would be walking, jumping and falling in pits, so that you can just get these core mechanics to the point, because if they aren't fun to play with, putting more content into the game won't make these core mechanics any better. So get this minimum viable product to the point. It's also how I made my Star Wars Battlefront shooter. Like I had this render engine, it's a more complex thing I'm gonna talk about in another video or two. But it's a great engine, so stay tuned for that video. And I used this engine to make a certain type of shooter mechanic, like walking and shooting and the enemies and tested it out until it was balanced, bug free and all of this and then I added some more parts to it like respawning and command posts and all of that stuff and then I added all of the rest like the menu and the graphics and the splash screen and all of that, the music, so on and so forth. So that's point one. Second is different projects. Like you know in Scratch where you can create different projects most people just use one project and do everything for their game in that project. It's very important to know the difference between a project and a game. So I, for example, as I said earlier, did the shooter mechanic in one project, but I did the menu in another and the splash screen in another one and the trailer in another one. So I had all of these different projects where I did one specific thing, and it's easier to test that way, it's easier to make changes, it's not as long on loading times, it's not as buggy and laggy if your computer doesn't run that fast, it's easier to find stuff. You might be asking yourself, well how do I get these things from these different projects into one project? There is a bit of a downside to this method, this is that you can only use it if you're a Scratch so if you have a Scratch account, but you can do that for free. So you can register on their website for free and get a Scratch account and everything's fine. You can go in and drag all of your sprites into the backpack, like for example the menu, where you have your menu screen and you just put it into your backpack. It's like this little bar at the bottom left of your project and you can click on it and you can drag things in the backpack and then you can go into your core project and drop all of these things out of your backpack into the project. What is important to remember if you are doing art, don't, and I say don't, really don't, just backpack the sprites. Because if you have like your sprites exactly at one place and you drag your whole costume into the into a new project, it will always uh, recenter it, but you don't want that normally. So just put the whole sprite in your backpack and then take the sprite and copy all of the things in the costume, like go in the costume, press Ctrl A, then go into your other sprite where you want your graphics to be, make a new costume and then Ctrl V, copy it in. Next point on the list is copying your project. Most people only when they want to do a new version of a project, they remix their project. But what's often forgotten is that if you go under edit, you can 
Mix to make a new project and save that project and load from your computer and save to your computer, you can also copy your project, which will make an exact copy of your project. And that's the way I usually save my project's progress. Like I was working on this render engine. I originally worked on it for a strategy game. But then I wanted to do the scratch battlefront thing in it. I didn't want to lose the project stuff, so I just made a copy of it and did all of the new stuff in there for the scratch battlefront thing. So I have had like two identical things, but I always have a backup if I want to do it, work on another project. And then in the with that same thing, I also took my scratch battlefront thing and do two versions of it usually. Like I work in a version and call it work version and if I do stuff that doesn't get into the newest update I can just leave it in there and then I make a copy of that project when I want to release it and call that one the right name and everything and clean up the whole project and so I can always be having all of the newest versions out but also working on the last version so on the latest thing for the next update. Fourth on my list is naming, like everything from custom blocks, variables, lists. I usually go about this, creating with underscores and names, putting them into like de facto groups. For example, if I have like four variables for the menu, like the audio in the menu, the screen we're at in the menu, the skin we have in the menu and something else we have in the menu, I will all name them menu underscore and then further on. You can also go as crazy as like, for example, you have the game underscore audio underscore volume. Tip is messages, like these event messages that you can send and then every sprite in the game can get also name them like before in the first point and you can use these very cleverly they get sent to every sprite so you can for example if you are loading into your game and have to do copies of something or save some data you can first send a message loading screen then the loading screen appears because the loading screen gets that message then you do the loading saving of the data and everything and then you can broadcast with this message loading the field or loading finalize or something and then the thing can go on. You can also use this cleverly to switch between the different parts of your projects. Like I said, make different projects and then backpack them and put them into the new project. You can like switch between the menu and the battles and stuff like that by using these broadcast blocks. Sixth on my list is variable usage. Of course, name them and everything, but you can do more with them than just change something or use them for mathematical stuff. But for example, in my Scratch game, Star Wars Scratch game, I use them for example for costumes and for factions and for everything, because you can put these into name blocks like switch costume to and then for the background, for example, I say switch costume to and put the variable map into the costume slot and it always automatically switches to the costume of the current map and that's very helpful and you can you then have to name your costumes in the right way but if you use them cleverly you can save up a lot of time by not making if else statements and stuff. Then seventh on my list is usage of custom blocks. Custom blocks are pretty neat. I will link a tutorial on custom blocks in the comments down below. But just be aware that they exist and you can easily use them and modify them to do the things you want to do and automate processes. Eighth on my list are clones. If you want to use several things of a kind, then it's very clever to use clones. I will go into more detail in another video, but you can basically use them for stuff like just making a sprite and then being able to also destroy that sprite like I did with my AI mates in the, in the Scratch Battlefront game. They all are clones and after their battle they can simply be deleted and don't take up on any processing power. 
Ninth on my list are comments. When you right click on any scripts and code in your, in your code section, you can add a comment and say, for example, what does it do? Why does it do that? And it's very important to comment on all of your things. It helps a lot when you go back into an old project or in very messy code that you can look through all of these comments and know what does which part do. You can also make notes by using comments and I don't want to write it down on any piece of paper. I can just make a comment inside the project and remember it for later. And last but not least, you can use loading. In normal engines like, for example, Unity, which I'm also using, there are different scenes and you can load between these different scenes, but the loading is done automatically when you say load between this and that scene. In Scratch, it's not that easy. It's everything like one scene. In Unity, you can do a menu scene and a battle scene and different level scenes and so on and so forth. But in my Scratch Battlefront game, I had to manually load between all of these. And therefore, it is important to always have a clean code and always load in and out of scenes like make de facto scenes and loading. And it's very important to load between those different scenes and you can use your knowledge of how Scratch works and all of the comments and custom blocks and messages. The broadcasting blocks are very, very helpful for that. So you can use the broadcast block to say unload scene one. And then every asset you use in scene one gets hidden variable, gets reset, and you can destroy clones. For example, say when when I receive unload scene, then destroy clone. And on the other hand, you can do the same thing for loading in the scenes to make to clone a sprite and to show a sprite and to enable code and everything. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any other video suggestions, make sure to comment them down below. Also make sure to join my Discord and subreddit. Links in the description below. From now on, I will be only naming the supporters, which are ranks on my Discord server you can earn by contributing to projects of the community. These are Hellrest100 and Potato Cato Champ.